executive chairman of the Center for Security Policy. Uh, my other day job is as the president of the Save the Persecuted Christians, a uh, new enterprise that is uh, well represented here by, among others, D.D. Logason, our executive director. Um, but in this capacity, I am the vice chairman of the Committee on the Present Danger of China, which is very pleased to be sponsoring this threat briefing on what the Chinese Communist Party is doing in the way of unrestricted warfare against the United States and for that matter, really the rest of the free world. And we have an extraordinary lineup of individuals who are going to help inform both the debate that's taking place about China in the general sense of the word, and I think the one that is beginning to develop more immediately with respect to the, we're told, incipient trade agreement between China and the United States. I say incipient, it's been incipient for about three or four months, as best I can tell, though Mick Mulvaney, the chief of staff of the White House the other day, allowed us how it's going to be resolved in the next two weeks, as he put it, one way or the other. I don't know quite what to make of that, but we'll be talking about why, from the position of this committee, it would be advisable to have it be the other, uh, rather than in the form of a, a trade agreement that is unlikely to be fulfilled in its own terms, and will have a host of very dire repercussions if it is not done in the context of the present danger that China represents in myriad ways. Um, we're going to be building on some insights that uh, I hope you have been exposed to already from previous presentations by the Committee on the Present Danger China, starting with our rollout uh, in late March in which we were really pleased to have 21 of our members providing brief four-minute presentations about the threat as they see it from their particular areas of expertise. It was really a formidable um, showcasing of both the character of those threats and in toto what they represent in terms of this unrestricted warfare against us. Uh, we also had a great meeting in this room uh, in early April in which Newt Gingrich, Senator Ted Cruz, Congressman Chris Stewart, Steve Bannon, and a number of others uh, participated in uh, what we called at the time a roundtable discussion, but um, as we had lots of roundtables as we do today, it's actually more of a threat briefing as well. Very, very powerful presentations. Um, and by the way, all of these are available to you at presentdangerchina.org. And then most recently, last week, we had a really impressive um, presentation, series of presentations in New York City, specifically aimed at the financial sector and business leaders, uh, to make the point basically that we are enabling through our underwriting, through our technology transfers, voluntary and involuntary, and through our other forms of support for the Chinese Communist Party and the regime that it uses to misrule China, out of our own pockets. And this is, of course, adding very considerable uh, insult to the injury. Uh, in the course of that program, there was a remark made by one of our presenters. Uh, he had spoken here as well, uh, namely Steve Bannon, whose uh, interest in this topic and help to it uh, really helped us get this off the ground. Um, Steve made an observation sort of channeling Abraham Lincoln that we're living in a global house divided, half free and half slave. 
A half slave, of course, is being enslaved by the Chinese Communist Party. And that means not only what the Chinese Communist Party is doing to its own people, but what it has in mind for many others and is now in the process of translating into actual imperial rule over others and enslavement through this Belt and Road Initiative about which we'll be hearing shortly. And Steve tied it into that particular audience by making the point that while the Chinese Communist Party is doing the enslaving, we are doing the enabling of the enslaving. And I think it was the consensus there, even interestingly enough among the audience, it seemed, uh, that this must stop. 